2017 CBR 1000 RR Fender Eliminator by Graves Motorsports install. Start by removing the rear seat. Five millimeter Allen to remove the front seat. Three millimeter Allen. I'm going to remove these four Allen screws. Phillips head screwdriver, we'll remove these two little uh, push pins. This can be a little tricky every now and then. And they like to turn a bit, so you can take a little scribe and we just put a little pressure on the edge of that while we spin this. Now, this is going to pull just straight. There's two little, there's two bigger clips right here and then little clips all the way around. And so what we want to do is we just want to kind of pull back and up at the same time. Like this. Not so hard to join the brake if this wheel on it. Just like there. I think you're breaking it, but you're not. It's these, uh, these two, these these four clips here. So you're kind of pulling it back and then lifting up at the same time, and then all these little jobs snap in place. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is remove these two Phillips head screws that hold this pan down. And these are more of a wood screw type. And then we're going to remove, oh yeah, that should just come straight back now. clips here at the back where these little clips are. They go into the black piece and then it has a little clip that goes right in there. You just kind of bring that down and then you can drop this back. Now we want to remove this other black cover here. It's like a belly pin. So there's a couple of push pins up underneath here, one here, one here, and then there are four of these little wood screws, two of which are located underneath the seat lock, so we're going to move the seat lock out of the way. And the seat lock are these four 10 mil head bolts.
this particular model has this strap that stays under the seat, except for when you uh, decide you want to put a passenger on. And then I suppose you put it up over the outside of that seat with the uh, little grab rail. You just pull this out by, it's got these little grooves here, we're just gonna just carefully lift that right out of there. Now we'll get these, so yeah, I think I'll do the, the two push pins underneath first. probably could get away without removing this, but this makes the job a lot easier if you just get it up out of the way. A couple extra steps. six or ten millimeter head six millimeter bolts that hold the stock fender eliminator on before we loosen those we're going to locate the license plate light the turn signals it easier if I use it. There we go. See that? Just kind of note the routing of where these wires are because you want to route it back in the same way. While you're supporting this with your other hand, push that in. And the fender eliminator just drops right out. Now we need to get the turn signals out of here. So 
So we've got to, we have to disassemble this part. And so there are a few screws holding this together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these, these three. It takes a five millimeter Allen here, here, and an eight millimeter wrench. And then that one right here. There's also one, two, three of these Phillips head screws that we're going to remove. I think I'll just go ahead and do the Phillips head screws first. this apart this part just flexes back and this this just spreads here so we're just going to spread that and we're going to drop this piece out and we're going to pull this part off so we can we don't need that we don't need this and now we're going to pull the two turn signals eight millimeter wrench socket that will speed the process up. Now save all these parts because we're gonna we're gonna reuse all these parts. It's the bolt and the washer. It's got a little insert here that kind of holds this all together. It's a spacer that fits inside this grommet. Just got to kind of work it back and forth a little bit. Probably use a nice wide flathead screwdriver if you just want to work it a little bit. Just be careful not to damage the wires. That little part slips out of there. Then the grommet itself, it comes out pretty easy. Just flex it a little bit. You can just push it right through the hole here. You don't need to remove the wire from the grommet. Then you can just pull the wire right out. Now, just note what color wire came off at which side. So when you go to put it on, you get the turn signal back on the right side. You have to do it twice. So the blue one is on the right.
Now, if you're planning on using a license plate light on the fender eliminator, then you're going to want to utilize, well, you don't have to, but you might want to utilize this connector. And so in the license plate light instructions, we'd have you cut this wire here and uh, pull the sheathing back and strip the wires and, and match these wires to the license plate light. There's these little uh, crimpless solder connectors where you strip enough wire and you go in, you know, in between this piece of solder on either side. And then you just solder, you just heat that up with a heat gun or a lighter and it melts the solder and the shrink tube shrinks over the wire, real nice connection. And then you can use a standard plug for that license plate light. We won't actually do that on this model since this isn't our bike, but uh, a pretty, pretty simple process. And there's instructions on the website for that. Let's put that to the side for now. So in the Graves kit, we have this center beauty cap cover, right and left brackets, and a turn signal mount. The cool part about this is, is that uh, if you had an integrated tail light, you could just leave the turn signal mount out. But uh, for this purpose, I, I really like to use the stock turn signals. They have a real nice look. Some guys like the integrated tail lights. So next step here is going to be to remove there and it doesn't matter which one you start with first you can grab the right or left whichever you prefer in the center cover now the center cover can only go in one way with the way this is shaped and be flush with the bodywork so you really just want to match these match this curvature of these two parts up right so we're gonna just we're gonna start with the left one in first and then we'll slide the other one in afterwards so we just bring this up in here. And we're gonna push the stock bolt. Through the holes and through the frame. And we're going to do the same thing with the front one. And then we're just going to put the nuts on. Not, not even finger tight, just, just so that we know the stuff won't fall off while we're working on the other side. Take the other side. And it's going to slip in right between that center bracket and the frame, nice snug fit, see that? Fits up real tidy like. Get this, these holes lined up. Slide the bolts through. Okay, we're all lined up. if you were going to put the turn signal mounts on um, and you were going to put on the license plate light we would get these parts out now there's the license plate light mount turn signal mount and the bolts and a couple of spacers here so we're just gonna pull that out Now there's also a couple of washers in here that you're going to need for another step in the process. And we'll get into that in a minute. So two nylocks, black nylocks, two nice button heads, and these two washers. Now right now we're just going to use these two bolts. 
and this is how this would mount. Normally you'd have a, you got a replica, replica license plate over here. This would mount like this. doing here is we're going to slide all this through onto these mounts here so that you can be sure that everything's lined up before you tighten up the license plate brackets. slide that on there. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten up these, these bolts. So, I like to use a torque wrench. Will it reach in there? Perfect. We're going to set that to 11 newton meters. Probably get away with it. signals. Blue one was for the right. And you could use a little lube or some some Windex to get this to slide in here. Be all smooth, but well, actually I was gonna tighten up these nuts first. Let me do that.
we could use just a little bit of lube. You could use water or Windex or what this little washer is for. So you take the little metal spacer, you know, the grommet spacer, and put this washer um, right over this, this bolt hole. This is just to add a little extra tension on the grommet in your bolt. that up by hand you want to just have a little feel for that probably a good setting for it I just don't know what it is maybe I should get the other side I know you have to be careful when you tighten these because that's just a you know, this little metal piece is cast into the plastic, so you just want to get it snug. grabbing this ratchet. Now I'm grabbing this ratchet so I don't put too much torque on it, just at the head. Snug that baby up look good. Could put a little Loctite on it if you wanted.
right up through this little hole here, and right through this, right here to the side. It kind of goes up over the top here into the side. Same thing with this one. Drive it right through here. do the same thing if we were going to install this this license plate light permanent on here it's got this this uh, two-sided tape and this stuff's really durable to get it wet whatever it, it's not going to come off but it would mount just right here on this little tab we go ahead and we put that right there and then light up your license plate. I don't really like to run the light license plate light, but some guys really feel like they need it, so they do a lot of riding at night, so it's it's in the kit. Make sure we got these wires. Perfect. So well after we get this in place then we'll, we'll snug these up. sure these things are backed out enough. That's the first one. That's the second one. And now the four little wood screws. I think I'll do these one at a time so that I don't drop them. Start with these at the back. And again, these just get snugged up. Now, just take a little peek in here, and make sure that you've got this screw that drops in up here. Nothing obstructing it. see this right here you see this groove here it's going to get up underneath of there and I got it on top I didn't see that when I was putting it in there
Now we'll put the body panels back on. We'll start with this first under tray piece that's notched out like this. So I've got it in place. Everything lined up underneath here. Okay. Start with the two push pins. Head. Head screws here, plastic screws. I call them a wood screw, but they're really going into plastic. Two over here that were under the seat lock. Seat lock back in place, so just kind of tilt it like this, and then bring it up in the groove. wires back in place. Since we're not doing the uh, tail light, light, license plate light, just leave that out. There's enough of this here, so I'm just going to fold this back here, lift this up, little tabs there. Two, and that's just going to sit back there. Now there's a little groove here and this rubber that fits in here, so make sure you get that back in there correctly. All that stays nice and clean. Okay. Now we're gonna go to this under tray here. Flip this over. Careful, like. First thing we need to do is get this little tab here in this groove. There we see the little groove in the black plastic. Then we got to kind of bring this back. Make sure we get these hooks. One there. And that snapped in place. And then 
on that one. And that snapped in place. And make sure this is forward. And now this is gonna line right up where these wood screws go, these little plastic screws. Sure your pieces are all in place, yeah, all nice and tidy underneath there. Yeah, the top's a little trickier. It just takes a little bit of patience to make sure we get these these four clips here into these these four grooves. That's the most important thing to start with. And then you can see that this this hook here goes over the tail light, so if you get you know these in but these aren't in you won't be able to get the tail light back in so you kind of want to just be a little patient to get these in first and then make sure this is down before you push it forward then we come back and make sure everything else is snapped in around the corners so let's take this kind of get this back out of the way and make sure we get our Jobs in the grooves. Just kind of feel for it. And they can pop back out while you're back here messing with another piece. So if you do, you just got to bring it back. Get all the pieces. feel it when you know it's and I just want to go around this rim like here and just make sure this is snapped in there and there. Alright, that looks good. Everything's all in the places where it's supposed to be. Now we can put the screws back in in the little push heads. These are just those little rubber grommets that this spins into, so don't put a lot of pressure to get them to go in. Just snug them up. Push pins here. One's gonna go there. Alright, good. Then we're gonna go front seat.
doing these at 10 newton meters. Ready to ride. Beautiful. Really cleans up the back of the bike. It's amazing.